Right, Simon here at Croft Park, a big occasion for, for Bly Spartans. How's it from a journalist looking from the outside? Well, it's an absolute pleasure to come and cover Bly Spartans uh, in, in the Cup. We get, we get to do it every, every few years because of the magnificent Cup history that the club's got. Um, but we always get a really warm welcome uh, before the game today, interviewing the players, some wonderful stories coming out. Um, totally different atmosphere from when you go to a Premier League club and, and interview people there. It's very open at Blythe. Everyone's got a great story to tell, so it's, it's a massive pleasure. And obviously you are used to dealing with you know, professional players and professional managers come down here to, to interview semi-professional players. How do you think they've carried themselves today? They carry themselves brilliantly. You know, in, in, you know, all journalists want is to be able to talk to people and, and a good bit of access and, and to players, players to just give their thoughts very honestly. And it's it's refreshing coming to Blythe and to, to, to see non-league clubs do really well in the Cup because they've got different stories. It's almost they've got stories to tell which are more connected with the people who support them and the people who turn up on the terraces because they've got jobs. They're not professionals, you know. Um, everyone can relate to them. They're doing it for the love um, um, of the game, um, not not just the money, you know, and the commitment and dedication that people and staff at Blythe and, and players at Blythe show, and the manager, you know, going to, going to away games, Hill Zone, coming back at 3 a.m. in the morning, getting up at 7 o'clock the next morning to to be at work. That's like almost football connected to to, to the supporters rather than, you know, we, we I cover the Premiership and, and you know that that people don't get that kind of connection when you when you look at the, at the Premier League. So it really is grounded football. It's it's the absolute lifeblood of the game. Really, you know, we watch the Premier League every every week and yeah the standards amazing the physicality is amazing the, the, the fitness is amazing and the skills are um, you know but, but it's not real football and you've got to have clubs like Blythe developing players and, and giving young players teenagers and the average age of the squad's 21 giving them a second chance in, in the game and that's what's that's what's brilliant about, about coming to clubs like Blythe understand you've got a, a bit of a connection with the club. Yeah, really, one of my first ever games was, was watching Blythe uh, with my granddad and my uncle. Um, and my granddad actually played for Blythe in, in, the, in a cup run of the, in the late 30s. And I've got an old picture of him from the Evening Chronicle. He was the winger, I think he was a right winger. Um, and he lived in Blythe and he played for Blythe. And, he, and some of the old guys here actually knew about him when I, when I mentioned this. And so I'm very proud to have a picture at home up my, on, my, on my wall of my granddad in the Blythe Barton shirt in the, in the late th 1930s. Is there any of that football? and talent passed down or? Uh, no, not much. I played when I was a kid for Cranleyton Juniors and actually Alan Shearer was two years above me at Cranleyton Juniors and Tommy Widrington who went on to play for Southampton uh, a, a great career there was my strike partner there but uh, sadly no, I mean I would love, I should really have stuck in and, and tried to get in the Blythe team and follow the tradition. And, and looking at Friday as a, a North East based journalist it's, it's a great occasion for the region. Yeah, it's fantastic uh, you know, to be live on the BBC and to have you know maybe potentially a million viewers maybe more than that on, on, on a live game. I think you know Blythe will be a big draw as well because people know about the FA Cup history. They remember the run of the, uh, you know, of the famous fifth round game against Newcastle, etc. And uh, at Newcastle and against Wrexham. So yeah, it, it's it's going to be a big draw, and that's why the BBC have picked have picked them. And it couldn't have been better to get two North East teams there battling it out on a, on a Friday night Friday night live on telly. I'm guessing you're going to want to stay neutral, but can we have a prediction? Well, I'm not. I'm not staying neutral. I, a lot of journalists like to stay neutral. No, I, you know, I, I want Blythe to win. I, absolutely, you know, I want. I see Newcastle play play someone. I, you know, I support Newcastle as a kid. I want to see Newcastle win. You know, so as a journalist, you can you can be a little bit detached, but you've also you get caught up with the emotion of things as well. And I'm desperate for Blythe to win. I hear you're on a really good run. Three defeats in 19 games. Um, you know, talent coming through, finding themselves again in the game after being kicked out by professional clubs. So, you know, these lads have got a lot to prove. Um, they've got a great stage to prove it at Hartlepool. You know, Nathan Buddle, you know, released by Hartlepool, going back there. You know, can he prove that they were wrong to do that? Loads of lads looking to prove themselves, and it could be a big night. I have to say, I'd love to predict a one-all draw, a two-all draw, uh, and to get the game back here, um, a replay back here.